Right. We are starting our discussion focusing on waves, sound, and light. So, um, we shall start by looking at what we call the transverse pulses. Right. In our discussion about transverse pulses, we answer the question about um, a pulse. What is a pulse? A pulse. A singular disturbance. Uh-huh, well done. A pulse is a single, is a single disturbance. A pulse is a single disturbance. A pulse is a single disturbance. Okay, so we have that. So now a pulse is a single disturbance. Now let us look at um more notions on these here. Um, there's something we call a transverse pulse. What is a transverse pulse? Right. And also we shall learn about um, the properties of these uh, pulses in transverse pulses, etc., etc. Okay. Now, there's something that is uh, very, very important here. Okay. Let's look at transverse pulses, but also I want to mention that in a transverse pulse, Right, in a transverse pulse, the particles the particles of the medium The particles of the medium move at right angles, at right angles to the direction, to the direction of propagation. of the pulse through the medium. Through the medium. Okay. Right, so now, I want us to focus on transverse pulses for now, but also have a discussion about the properties of these. Okay. So now, let us define the following here. A transverse pulse. Right, so a transverse pulse right. So now when we, we actually first look at the fact that 
Um, the pulse travels along a medium, but the turns of the medium, for instance, are in vertical positions, up and down, at right angles to direction of propagation. So in a transverse, in the notion of a transverse pulse, um, the movement of the pulses is such that they move at right angle to direction in which the pulse itself tends to move. And so now this describes the pattern of movement in what you call a pulse or in particular a transverse pulse. Now, I want us to have a clear and but very concise discussion about the following um, features. Okay, so a transverse pulse is a is a pulse that moves that moves across at right angles at right angles right so we are defining here what you call a transverse pulse obviously a transverse pulse is a pulse that moves at right angles right at right angles let's add here at right angles to the direction of propagation. At right angles to the direction to the direction of propagation. Right, so we note that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I want to also say a little bit much. That I want you to note that in a transverse pulse, and let's highlight this one. In a transverse pulse, the particles of the medium move at right angles to the direction of propagation of the pulse through the medium. Okay, so that is one thing. So in other words, you can look at a pulse as a single disturbance. The pulse is a single disturbance. But most importantly, in a transverse pulse, uh, the particles of the medium move at right angles to the direction of propagation of the pulse. Okay. So now I want us to sort of have a fair description of this because if we are really saying the transverse pulse, the particles of the medium move at right angles, the direction of propagation um, of the pulse through the medium. Right, so we know that a transverse pulse is in the first place a pulse. Um, and I want to define these differently. I want to in involve the word particles here. I want to involve the word particles here in the following manner. Right. Let me clean this up. I want to state this in a more concise manner. So a pulse, once again, is in the first place a pulse. Um, whose particles? Right. 
right is the pulse whose particles or is the pulse such that that's better pulse such that the particles of the medium move at right angles at right angles to the direction to the direction right of propagation is a power such that the particles of the medium move at right angles to the direction of propagation. Propagation of the powers. through the medium. Through the medium. Okay, we continue. Um, so, now, um, let us um, look at some properties of a pulse. So it's very important to, to be in a position to describe the properties of um, a pulse. So let us look at um, a slinky spring. Right, something called a slinky. And now, if you look at a slinky, in the rest position, right, a slink in the rest position would be, if you have the human hand here, and here comes this slinky spring. Like this. Okay, so now this would be the slinky slinky spring in the rest position. This could be the slinky spring or it is the slinky spring in the rest position. So if this is just a spring that is not stretched but somebody has just touched both ends of the spring of the slinky spring so this slinky spring can be stretched but now this is the slinky spring in the rest position okay this is the slinky spring in the rest position now, if you look carefully, now we can look at the spring just resting. You can consider this spring as resting on a tabletop. Okay, these things here, this is a human. 
human hand. And this one is also a human hand. It's a human hand. So it's now um it's it's it's, it's this slick spring it's in the rest position and it's it's rested. Like you can review this, this as being rested on the surface of a table. If you have a table here. It is on the tabletop. It is on the surface of a table so on the tabletop so it is rested on the tabletop it's resting there and it's sitting and a person is just holding the hand the ends of the of this spring now let's look at the next thing let's look at this spring now here is The tabletop still. And then now the spring is like this. Okay, here's the spring. Here is the spring. Okay, now it's like has gone up in the middle so because it has gone up in the middle we're gonna just under, understand what is happening to the spring here and um okay now you can have this one here the human hand Okay, this one is uh, still the human hand. But also here, this is also the human hand. Okay. Now there's certain things here like your transverse motion of the turns. So this here now, if somebody teases the spring and lifts it up, what is going to happen is it's going to reveal something we call the transverse motion. The transverse motion of the of the turns okay so it goes this it goes that way okay so it goes sort of up and down so if somebody takes this and teases this and tempers with it, what then happens is it's going to be up and down. Okay. So if somebody like lifts it up at one end, then it's going to go up and then it's going to go down that way. So, um, Okay, now it goes up and then it goes down. But what we note, therefore, is because it is moving actually up and down like this, but the direction of propagation is um, from left to right of the of the table. 
and therefore we can see that the direction of propagation. So this one becomes um, a diagram. So this diagram here. Diagram of a transverse pulse moving along a slinky spring. moving a slinky spring so this diagram here shows the transverse diagram of the transverse pulse moving along a slinky spring so now in this spring, you can see that if somebody lifts it up like this, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, whoo, up and down, and therefore we have that. Okay. Let's continue to analyze this notion here. Let us now define a medium. What is a medium? Have you ever heard of a medium before? Yes. Okay. I'm excited. I'm happy that you know of a medium. But what do you think a medium is? The object. Please come again. The object. The object. Well done. It is the object. It is the object. I like that. Let me write it here. It is the object. Well done. So it is a substance through um right, a substance uh, through or along which something Something moves um, or is transmitted. Okay, a substance through or along which something moves or is transmitted. Right, this is the object. So a substance through or along which something moves or is transmitted is called basically a medium. Right, so now let us look at a couple of definitions here that we need to learn. Let us look at describing a pulse. Describing a pulse. Right, let us describe a pulse. Okay, we have defined the powers as a single disturbance. A single disturbance, a single disturbance is what? Is a pulse. Um, so, pulse length. Pulse length. What do we mean by pulse length? Pulse length refers to the distance. The distance from one end of the pulse 
to the other end. Okay, so by pulse length, we refer to the distance from one end of the pulse to the other end. Okay, so that is pulse length. The distance the distance from one end of the pulse to the other end is called the pulse length. And we're going to uh, show that one. Um, we're going to use um, a diagram to show this. What is a displacement? There's something we called the disturbance. Right, something called the disturbance or the disturbance or displacement. Okay, so something called the disturbance or the displacement. How far? And in what direction? In what direction a point right so now disturbance or displacement what do we mean by these and i want to underline these in yellow okay all right so I'll underline well neatly. I'll underline very neatly. <laughs> I'll underline neatly. Right. I'll underline neatly. Okay. Okay, good. I'm just getting my pen set up. I'm resetting the pen, just to, that's the reason why I'm doing this. Okay. All right, so now we have the disturbance. Okay, by the disturbance, then at this point, um, we refer to, we mean how far and in what direction a point, how far and what direction a point or particle or particle in the medium has moved has moved from the rest position So now we have disturbance. So disturbance then at this point refers to, or displacement, how far and what direction a point or particle in the medium has moved from the rest position. What do we mean by disturbance or displacement? We refer to how far and in what direction 
a point or particle in the medium has moved from the rest position. So amplitude. Amplitude. Amplitude, what do we mean by amplitude? Have you ever learned about the amplitude? What do you think the amplitude is? Um, the height. The height. Well done. It's the height. I like that. It's the height. So we define the amplitude as a measure. Of how big. A pulse is. Right. So. Now. A measure of how big a pulse is. Refers to the amplitude. We can mention things like the the more energy more energy the particles are given are given the feather. They can move from the rest position. The more energy the particles are given, the further they can move from the rest position. So we are describing here the amplitude. I like your description of the fact that the amplitude itself, you can view it as the height. You can view the amplitude as the height. You can view the amplitude as the height. And view the amplitude as the height. Okay, so let's continue now. Okay, this is, is about just describing a pulse, but let's define an amplitude. So we say amplitude. Is the maximum. Is the maximum disturbance. Of a particle. Okay, so amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium. or equilibrium. So we continue. 
Amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest position. Note that here, by the amplitude, we mean the maximum disturbance. Amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest position or equilibrium position. Let's look at a diagram. We shall be looking at some terminology. Okay, some terminology, if you look at this graph like this, and there is this one that goes up this way. And then now, okay, so and these, okay. Okay, so you look at this now, this is called the rest position. It's called the rest position and there's a vertical Displacement. Now, this maximum disturbance from the rest position to the highest point is called the amplitude. This one is called the amplitude. And then, if I can even clean this up, so this is called the amplitude. And then now you have this one now that is um, so now at this point you need disturbance Disturbance or displacement. Of particle. Change in Y. Okay, so now let's look at these. Okay, so you can see that there is, if this one is the sort of the, the wave, this one here, the pulse, right? Here is the pulse. And now if you look at the distance from the equilibrium position or from the rest position, This maximum, the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest position is the amplitude. So amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest position. So that refers to um, an amplitude. So it is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest position. That's an amplitude. So we have looked at amplitude. We have looked at disturbance. We have looked at the notion of what we call the rest position. 
If this is the x-axis, there's migration and propagation in that direction, there's propagation vertically. So if this is the kind of the slinky spring that we're looking at, the slinky spring, then you can see the spring now, if somebody tees it, tosses it up, pushes it uh, at the beginning, and suddenly you can see the rest of the spring uh, following the, the motion as shown there. So those are the things that you need to take note of. So um, as part of these, you must be able to answer a couple of questions. You must be able to answer questions on transverse pulses. Right, so what are these transverse pulses? Let's look at um, an activity. Right, it's, it is an and uh, in this activity, what you need to be able to do is to answer questions, questions on transverse pulses. Okay, let's look at number one. Write down, write down or write definitions for write definitions for. 1.1 pulse. One point two transverse pulse. One point three amplitude. Right, amplitude. Two, describe. How to produce How to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. Right, using a slinky. We're going to do this activity together now. Number three, a transverse pulse moves from to turn along a slinky. Compare. Compare the movement of the turns of 
of the turns with the direction with the direction that the pulse is moving. The 3.2, explain. What is the title of the textbook that you're using? Doxentia. Oh, Doxentia. All right, yes. good. Right, explain how the movement of the turns of the turns propagates right uh, propagates the pulse. Number four, you need to draw a graph. to show a transverse pulse in the process we shall label the axis as well as pulse length amplitude 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 and rest position. Okay, so now let us write down the definitions of these. Okay, what do you think? Here is an activity. I'm calling it activity one, every activity one. Write down definitions for pulse. What do you think a pulse is? A pulse is a singular disturbance. Well done, it's a single disturbance. So a pulse is a single disturbance. So look at the solutions here. Good, well done. So, um, one, one point one, a pulse is a single. Disturbance. One point two. And then a transverse pulse. One point two, a transverse pulse. Um, a pulse that moves. Across at right angles to the direction of propagation. Definitely. Right. So a transverse pulse 
a transverse powers is a powers that moves at right angles at right angles to the direction of propagation or you can say the power a pulse is or a transverse pulse is a pulse that moves um, at right angles, the direction of propagation of the particles. Obviously, if you're looking at the propagation of the pulse, um, I can write it nice like we wrote before to say a transverse pulse is a pulse that moves or is a pulse such that, like we said here, Like we said here, the transverse pulse, the pulse, such that the particles of the medium move at right angles to the direction of propagation of the pulse. So, So you can define it like that. There are many ways to state that. But another way to state that is to say, I like this one to say a pulse, a transverse pulse, a pulse that moves um, such that the particles of the medium said that the particles of the medium move at right angles at right angles to the direction yeah to the direction of propagation direction of propagation of the powers through the medium. Right, so... Right, let's just analyze this carefully. So we have defined the powers and also transverse powers. So transverse powers is a powers that move such that the particles of the media move at right angles to the direction of propagation of the powers through the medium. Now, this is brilliant stuff. Next, we define an amplitude. What do you think an amplitude is? Um, it's the maximum disturbance of a wave from its first position. Well done. It is the maximum disturbance um, of the wave from its rest position. That's brilliant stuff. So this can be written in many ways, 1.3. So amplitude is the maximum
is the maximum disturbance. Maximum disturbance of a particle of a particle from its rest or right. So we sometimes call that the equilibrium from its rest or equilibrium position. Just to write this one here. From its rest, or you can say equilibrium position. Right, amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position. So that is what we have. Right, so we have defined an amplitude. An amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position. So the couple of things I want us to also discuss here. We need to be able to describe in the second point, describe how, okay? Describe how to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. Describe how to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. Now, let's describe this one. Number two, right. Right. I want us to just to discuss these. Here. So this linky, let's look at diagram one. All right, so to describe these, you can use a diagram. Okay, let's uh, have a table here. And Okay, let's have the horizontal case first. Um, now you have the horizontal one. So you can have the, like we saw the human hands, their fingers and uh, their fingers of the human hand here. Human hand. Then applies that this thing here is the is the, is a table. And this yellow stuff here, yellowish stuff is the slinky spring. Okay, so now um,
Now let's have more. Um, problems. So in the end, here is the table again. This time around, this link is sort of giving some energy and the forces applied to it. It, it, it has some kinetic energy. So this one is a hand. It's a hand and that still remains a slinky. Okay. Um, now the couple of things I want us to sort of discuss here. And then we then say So what happens here is that your hand moves the end turn of the spring sideways. When the end moves, it moves the next turn. So your hand your hand moves. the end turn of the spring sideways when the end Turn moves. It moves. The next turn, which then moves um the one next to it so this is some um, ripple effect and we proceed to then say the Sideways, sideways movement goes along the spring from turn to turn. So now what happens is your hand moves the end turn of the spring sideways. So if you have the spring, then you move it sideways with one hand. When the end turn moves, it moves the next turn. Okay? So because the spring is, is, is one object, so when the end turn moves, it moves the next turn. So you move the end, then the next turn moves. Um, and the next turn moves, or the next turn, which then moves the one next to it. So it's the ripple effect. The sideways movement goes along the spring from turn to turn. So this sideways movement moves from turn to turn. Moves from turn to turn until such that 
uh, until such time that um, there is movement to the other end of the of, of, of the spring. So in other words, it begins the movement begins from one end to the next. And that describes here, it actually describes how to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. How to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. Now, the next thing. Okay, a transverse pulse moves from turn to turn along a slinky. A transverse pulse moves from turn to turn along a slinky. Compare the movement of the, yeah, that is the, the one we're discussing now because we describe how to produce a transverse pulse using a slinky. Right. Compare the movement of the turns with the direction that the pulse is moving. Okay. Compare the movement of the turns with the direction that the pulse is moving. So let's look at 3.1. So the turns, so we can say the movement. Of the turns. Is it the movement of the turns is at right angles? Is at right angles to the direction of propagation of the um, of the spring. Yeah, or direction of the pulse. Because now, um, compare the movement of the turns with the direction of um, that the pulse is moving. So you say that the movement of the turns is at right angles to the direction of movement of the pulse. Okay, so now this is uh, what we are effectively saying. So the movement of the turns is at right angles with the direction of movement of the powers. Um, Right, so the movement of the turns is at right angles to direction of movement of the pulse. Because now what is happening here is here is the is <laughs> up totally see. Just a sec. I'm wondering what I did here. All right, so I think I might have deleted something. No mind, I'm going to restore it. So obviously here we're saying a transverse pulse moves uh, from turn to turn along a slinky. Right, you need to compare the movement of the turns with the direction of that the pulse is moving. So in 3.1, once again, I was saying the movement, so that I think that got deleted, the movement of the turns, is at right angles 
with right angles to the direction to the direction of propagation of propagation of the pulse. Here we're saying the movement of the turns is at right angles to the direction of propagation of the pulse. I want to have a diagram that illustrates this. So here is the tabletop with legs. And this is a table. So use a different color. So for example, now if you have this, okay, so now here is the slinky spring. Here is a boy that is actually actively on one end here holding the slinky. And also this one is holding the slinky. And this one is the hand. This one is also the hand. Okay. And now he's just tossing it, tossing one, one end up or sideways. Okay. If you toss it sideways, then what happens? We agree that ultimately the, the, this spring is such that it is propagating in two effective, in, in a couple of directions first. Let's just mention that. So it goes first because it was moved up. So it first goes up and then down. But ultimately, it will propagate, it, uh, it's moving from left to right. The powers. It has its direction of propagation. So the direction of propagation of the pulse is from left to right. From left to right. Okay, so the direction of propagation of the pulse is from left to right. So now, if the direction of propagation of the pulse is from left to right, what then do we say here? So, um, but it is moving like, like a snake, you know, like a snake, because now we find that it's just waving like this, but it's going there, but it's waving like this, like a, like waves in the sea. Have you ever seen the sea waves? They they go up and down, up and down, but the sea is moving towards the waves are moving towards the seashore. But it's the, those waves are actually up and down. Those are the pulses um, that we see there in the sea. Next question. Three point two. Explain how the movement of the turns propagates the pulse. So here we're to compare, compare the turns and the direction that the pulse is moving. So you can see that it's turning up and down. It's turning the turns. Those turns are up and down but the direction is from left to right of these powers. It's from left to right, but those turns are up and down, okay? So that's one thing that we note, uh, that those turns are up and down, but the powers is from left to right. So if you explain how the movement of the 
Pons propagates the pulse. Propagates the pulse. So in other words, um, let's explain 3.2 now. How the movement of the turns propagates the pulse. How is it that those turns, when it's turning like this, how does it propagate the pulse from left to right? How? Okay, so let's explain that part. This, we have the notion of momentum as well. So the movement of the turns um at right angles at right angles right so the movement of the turns at right angles to the direction to the direction of propagation of the powers direction of propagation of the powers um causes causes the particles in the slinky in the slinky spring to vibrate which transfers energy of motion which transfers energy of motion in the slinky in the slinky which transfers energy of motion in the slinky to propagate to propagate um from one end to the next of the slinky. Okay, so the movement of the turns at right angle to direction of propagation of the pulse causes the particles in the slinky spring to vibrate, which transfers energy of motion in the slinky to propagate from one end to the next of the slinky, of the slinky spring. Okay, there are many ways to sort of um, explain this. Of the slinky spring, of the slinky spring.
Ok. So we continue. We continue. Next question. So we're effectively obviously saying that if one teases the spring and gives it an initial move by um, tossing it up at one end, what it does is um, this linked spring will do up and down movements. These up and down movements obviously um, transfer um, energy in motion called kinetic energy in the spring, and therefore you can you find that these vibrates to the end. These vibrates to the end. Next. Right. Here's a question about drawing a graph. Draw a graph. That number four, did I put that question here? Yes, draw a graph to show a transverse pulse. Label the axis as well as pulse length, amplitude, and the rest position. We need to draw the graph of a transverse pulse. How does a, the, the graph of a transverse pulse look like? We need to draw a graph. There's a graph of a transverse pulse, but how does the graph of a transverse pulse look like? How does the graph of transverse pulse look like? There's a line which is the rest position, and then there's a, a, a wave on top of the rest position that well shows the... Yes, there's a wave on top of the rest position. I like that. And that's exactly what we're going to draw. Well done. And um, I'm excited. And congratulations to you for sharing that answer is actually a very useful answer. So you have this and you have that. There is some movement in the vertical axis, in the horizontal axis. So, and then, You have this kind of a movement. And then now we're going to show um, if this one here is the is the rest position. Right, so we have that this one is the rest position. And then it goes up. And this is the amplitude. Um, so Okay, so now this one here is the disturbance. Is the disturbance displacement? Displacement of of particle. So that is the disturbance. The disturbance is sort of moving the particles upwards in the delta y. And delta y means the motion in the vertical axis, which is like the y-axis. So there's that disturbance. We have shown the disturbance. And now um, that is the amplitude, which measures the 
um, maximum disturbance, amplitude measures the maximum disturbance there from the rest position straight up. And then you have the pulse length. Okay, so you have the pulse length. Right, so the pulse length is actually um, from like here to there, as shown there from the beginning to the end of the pulse, is called the pulse length. So it is right, this one here is called the pulse length, which is from the beginning of the pulse to the end of the pulse. So, So now, so now there's something we call um, superposition of pulses. So the next thing we're going to discuss now is called the superposition of pulses. Right, super position of pulses. Okay, now the superposition of pulses um, becomes extremely important. But first, we describe uh, what we call interference. What is interference? Interference is when Two or more pulses and waves interact with each other. with each other in the same space. In the same space. The same space and at the same time, Now, so here interference is when two or more. So that's what we're saying here. It's when two. Right, so interference is when two or more pulses and waves interact with each other in the same space and at the same time. Um, okay, we are here, we are continuing. 
what is interference? Interference is when two or more pulses and waves interact with each other in the same space and at the same time. Two or more pulses and waves interact with each other. So we say this interference because we have two or more pulses there. Two or more pulses. Okay, let us understand these. And let's look at a diagram to show this here. Here is the diagram. Here is a diagram. <laughs> right, so I'm going to use another screen because it's okay. Right, it's going to use another screen now. Right, so now we're going to use we're discussing the superposition. Right, we're discussing superposition, so get yourself ready. Um, okay, actually getting to another screen. Chris, I want us to continue. All right, getting to another screen for us to continue. All right, we're going on. All right, we're getting to another screen just now. Superposition. Right, so I was speaking about superposition, in particular, we're speaking about interference uh, here. Transverse pulses. Travel towards each other. From from each end of the slinky so let's look at the human hand and holding uh, this slinky And then you have this. So you have the so here is a slink now. It's up here, it's up there, it's, it's a bit horizontal here in the middle. 
And for this one goes up here. Plus 120 millimeters. Plus 80 millimeters. Okay, so there's that upward movement now. Um, this link here is, is held up, then it's pushed up a little bit here, given an upward movement, and suddenly it moves up. But also it moves up here, so there's a pulse and a pulse there. And you can see the um, there's an interference in the... Now they're going to meet at some point because this migration, this one is doing up and down movement, and this is also doing up and down movement. But because of this link spring, um, that's connected in just one structure, they're beginning to migrate towards each other, one from left to right and the other one from right to left. Right, the disturbances are to the same side. Okay, so we have that. Okay. Now they're there, like that figure, call this figure one. And call this figure two. Right, in figure two, then you have, what is gonna happen when this one of them is 120 mi uh, millimeters in in the height here the height is that or the amplitude and here the amplitude is 80. so let us see what happens so now you have this one here still the hands are there and now this is the slinky This is the slinky. <laughs> Where the two pulses cross, the disturbance increases. So let me, let us do figure two on the next slide. Okay, but let's do it on the next slide and understand what's happening here. Okay, so you have that. Okay, here is the slinky spring and Somebody is holding it there with their hands, and somebody is holding it with their hands there like this. And now they're moving it up, tossing it up, and suddenly, I mean, it was tossed up here, and these pulses started migrating towards towards each other. And what you then can see here is something similar. something similar. They combined. Yes, now they combined now to form one. One big pulse, okay? Good. They combined now to form one big pulse. And so this one now, I want us to call this one figure two. So in figure two now, the two pulses now we had so one using a spring used both hands to lift the spring up and then the pulses were formed. And then now suddenly they started to um to migrate towards each other. So they combined to form one big pulse. Okay. You can see one big pulse. So now figure two. Let's discuss, uh, let's uh, uh, elaborate what is happening here in figure two. where 
the two pulses cross the disturbance. The disturbance increases. Increases. So where the two pulses cross, the disturbance increases. Now you can see that the disturbance is big now because the two pulses crossed, they met, and therefore the disturbance increases, but also superposition leads to constructive interference. So we describe what we call superposition. Superposition um, leads to leads to constructive constructive interference okay so now Figure two, where the two pulses cross, now they, when they combine, they form a big disturbance, so the disturbance increase, uh, increases. Now, superposition leads to constructive interference. Constructive interference, okay. So you continue. Constructive interference. Now let's look at the next one. Figure three. Right after crossing. Right after crossing. The two pulses carry on. They carry on unchanged. So now you have the slinky. Okay, so sort of clearer, okay. So now they combined. So after they combined, then this one still continues in that direction and this one continues still in that direction, but you still have the, the hands here, like this. And so this one continues that way and this one continues that way. They combined, but still now they, they move in the opposite directions now towards the end. So after crossing the two pulses, carry on and changed. Superposition. Superposition. Okay, so now the couple of things that
Okay, learning superposition, I want us to focus on the principle itself called the principle of superposition. Where pulses cross the combined the combined disturbance at any point. is equal to the sum of the disturbances. So now we continue. Okay, we are focusing on the principle of superposition. Where two pulses, right, where two pulses cross the combined disturbance at any point is equal to the sum of the disturbances. So this is what we have. Where pulses cross the combined disturbances at any point is equal to the sum of the disturbances. So we saw that is the sum of this. So the principle of superposition says where pulses cross the combined combined disturbance is the sum of the disturbances. So we are saying what is happening is that the pulses cross. When the pulses cross, there is a combined disturbance, which is uh, equal to the sum of the disturbances. The sum of the disturbances. So we saw that here, the pulses crossed, so as a smaller pulse and a smaller pulse, they cross, and then whenever they cross, then the um, uh, disturbance at any point is equal to the sum of the disturbance. So the disturbance here sort of increased in this case. So, but need to understand that there are two types of interference. So there's either constructive interference or destructive interference. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Constructive interference. Right, constructive interference. Right, constructive interference. We say that constructive <clears throat> interference takes place. when the disturbance when the disturbance right 
right takes place when the disturbance of the combined pulses is greater than the individual Okay, just one minute. Hello? Yeah, fine, thanks, and you? Oh, okay, I'm coming now, I'm coming now, I'm coming now. Okay, give me like two minutes, I'm coming, okay? Two minutes, Leanda, okay? You still yeah. with me, Luanda? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming in two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Rianda, Rianda. Yeah. Yeah, Rianda. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, I just had to speak to somebody at the door. Somebody had parked a car and 
they were here to deliver my goods. Okay, now I was saying that constructive interference takes place when the disturbance of the combined paralysis is greater than the individual individual rights, individual disturbances. Okay, so this refers to constructive interference. Um, takes place when the disturbance of the combined paralysis, when they are combined, you have that um, the disturbance is greater than the individual disturbances. So here, you had the individual disturbances, and those were small, but now when they are combined, the disturbance was big, combined. Okay, so this is called constructive interference, and then there's something that is called destructive interference. Destructive. Interference. Destructive interference. Right, we say that destructive interference right destructive interference takes place. when the combined disturbance is a smaller than the individual individual disturbances right so those are the kinds of things so now Right, let us see what we need to do now. An example. Let's have an example. Right, in this example, we're effectively saying Calculate. What time is the next class? Um, I don't have classes anymore. Okay, that's all. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm just finishing this. Okay, I know that I'm going a little bit after a couple of because I ran out, so I'm gonna like go beyond by like two minutes. I'm not gonna take too long. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. I want us. I want us to discuss some calculations, like calculate the amplitude of the. Combined pulses um, in the figure below. Okay, so you have that, this one. There is a pulse here like this. And then it goes up. And then We 
Okay, so like that. And then now you would have the the other one when they are combined. And then now you still have the hands here. Still have the hand here. And you have the hand here. Right, like that. And then now this one um, here. Is the okay? This one is hundred. It's plus one twenty millimeters. So. You have here, so we continue. And then here is 80. Okay, um, right. Okay, 80, 80, and then now the question is, what would the combined one be? Let's look at the solution to this one. Let's look at the combined one. Solution. Right, so obviously looking at the solution now, you can be able to find the combined pulse here and so what is the answer to this? The amplitudes. It's 200 millimeters. What do you think it's gonna be? 200. Good. Well done. Well done. Well done. Excellent. You are right. So the amplitude of the pulses right R plus 120 millimeters and plus 80 millimeters respectively. And so using the principle of superposition, using the principle of superposition, the combined amplitude combined All right, so the combined uh, amplitude is equal to plus 120 millimeters plus and you plus 80 millimeters and if you add them up, you get plus 200 millimeters, which is um, is 200 
above the rest position. So, I want to give another example, the last one. The last example for today. Okay, so here now you have this one. It's a small parse. And it goes straight. Okay, so we continue. So it goes up like this, and then here, this one is going down like this. So so now. So you have now this one here. Here's the hand. Here's the hand. So now this one is, is, is the hand. This one is the spring, but now it's moving this way. So this one is going the other way. So right, so This one goes up here, plus 120 millimeters. And this one, okay, this is our last example, please. I'm not gonna keep you very long. Okay, so now there's, here is the spring. Um, and then now, okay, you give this spring a push up with one hand and with the other hand you, sort of give it a push down and then we understand therefore that it's going to continue moving in the directions that I've, I've shown in blue and so the hands are holding it at both ends but now we can see that what you can see as the outcome is like this here is the spring So it's just showing some, some, uh, some pulse here. But now, as it's showing this pulse, what you can see is going a little bit up, like this. Okay. Now, here comes the question. Calculate. So last example, calculate the amplitude. The amplitude of the combined pulses. in the figure. 
Right. Oh. <laughs> right, let's look at the solution now. What is the solution? So the combined pulse, or rather the combined amplitude, is okay. So here, this is going to be the plus one twenty. Is it forty? Well done. It's forty, and then this other one is negative. Well done. It is forty. Our last example, just 40 millimeters. So it's 40 millimeters above the rest position. Above the rest, above the rest position. So it's gonna be, the combined one is gonna be 40 because we're just adding them up, okay. So yeah, I must thank you for joining us today and i spoke to your mom that uh, we, we need more time before monday so that we can practice more so your mom is going to let you know but yeah we need more time to practice more so that you can like master everything and like excel on monday so yeah your mom is going to discuss we're going to discuss the time and see what time is is the best so that we can like practice more and more. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that you can get like a hundred percent because that's what we want. So, but for you to get a hundred percent on Monday, we need to like practice more and more. We must, you must learn more tricks. You must learn the tricks. You must master the tricks. You must master the, the different challenges and the tricks that come with the questions but some of the questions are tricky you know you look at the question and it's tricky you wonder how to start how to do it what the correct answer is those are the kinds of things we're going to discuss okay thanks a lot luyanda and i'm going to send the links to your mom to these videos so that you can like watch them when you want to watch etc okay yeah all right thanks a lot um see you next time your mom is going to let you know okay thank you Thanks, Luanda. Goodbye, Luanda. Bye. Bye.